Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number 8, I believe, of the PBAL. Now we are up against Big Time Brownie and his Green Bay Yampers. And my apologies, I will have to post calm this only because I did lose the audio to this original recording. But we will manage and hopefully everything from here on out should be done live. But unfortunately, yeah, I just lost some audio. And I do really need to quickly mention that there will be no week 7 only because there were a lot of scheduling conflicts and ultimately Ultimately, we were not able to kind of make our schedules align. So I will be awarded a forfeit win for week seven. But with that said, now he has a really, really frightening team for a couple different reasons. But in all honesty, my first reaction to the team was Zerkatry kind of has a field day with this kind of team. And it does have somewhat of a rain water based mode. Really nothing stops it because his only ground type is going to be Claydol. And ideally that can be dealt with reasonably early with an energy ball. Maybe a risky prediction here or there, but I feel like I can make manage that and after that it can just kind of volt switch in and out and create momentum for me and a lot of his offensive mons get hard walled by my slow bro so those are my first reactions but when i really started to kind of go into the build the electivire is a huge huge threat here right and the electivire makes it much more difficult for my circuitry but it, it's also a huge huge threat on its own because my mons don't really deal the best with electric types just in general but more importantly than that he just has a lot of things that kind of stop my mons in their tracks i'm particularly worried about the drape beyond coming potentially looking at team preview everything that he did bring was pretty much expected more or less with the urshifu the electivire the coma o the comfy the age of slash and the tornadoes now i had a lot a lot of thinking to do in the whole building process because i really did like my slow bros matchup i really did like my urshifu's matchup it can just kind of do a lot being banded and kind of getting in and out and dealing a lot of damage where it needs to the zerka tree like i mentioned can do a lot for me here and my rotom can kind of act as like a mini zerka tree here but it's also going to be my main stop to this electivire so it is max defense and it's just going to be here primarily to stop that electivire as well as kind of pivot around quite a bit the urshifu and zerka are going to be my main sources of damage and probably my strongest win conditions while again everything else is just meant to get me some momentum now i struggled a lot with this silvali uh, at first i really wanted a silvali ground to kind of hard wall that electivire and it can kind of switch in on a drapeon as well and it can deal super effective damage because i don't have a lot of super effective damage for the drapeon and, and again it can really stop my urshifu in its tracks if it's really defensive and it can kind of spread damage off on my team so i really wanted it to be ground and then i really kind of convinced myself that i really needed it to be steel because i really don't have that many solid answers to a comfy because comfy can honestly beat my entire team on its own if i don't really have a dedicated stop to it and i really don't have the best stops to it especially when my two main walls the slower and, and the skarmory get kind of taken down but with my skarmory just not being especially defensive enough so if it gets chipped down and that's going to be an issue and skarmory is definitely a sixth mon in this matchup i really didn't feel it was the most necessary but it felt like it could do enough for me just kind of stopping certain mons in their tracks like the drapeon and potentially the coma o and getting a little bit of rock helmet chip getting some hazards up and i can kind of just hopefully maneuver to do what it needs to do here but it wasn't really that essential to what i wanted to do with the slow bro as my other main wall it can just giga drain on that and against my rotom it can kind of deal with that and it can kind of deal with everything on my team so i really needed a dedicated switch in i convinced myself for a while that i really needed silvali steel and i went back and forth a lot on that and i was really happy when i settled on silvali poison right so Savali Poison gives me that hard wall to, to Comfy that I really need and at the same time it forces him to respect it in terms of that Koma O and that Urshifu just firing off fighting type attacks you know willy nilly and just it gives him something to think about at, at least in this flow of the match even though this is a max special defense almost max special defense Savali to specifically deal with the Comfy and to deal with a potential tornadoes because tornadoes can also just tear through my team and i really needed a hard stop to it and this isn't again the strongest hard stop to it but that's gonna be pretty much my entire team building process either way um i i'm looking over leads and obviously i think the best possible lead is going to be the urshifu if he picks a wrong lead like the aegis slash trying to trying to catch me off guard i can get very free damage anything else i can u-turn out on and i feel like it can create the most mismatches so that's what i'm going to be going with for the opening of this matchup okay so here we are and like i said i will try to lead off with this urshifu try to create some mismatches and he leads off with a coma which creates a really big mismatch for me because coma is not really something that i deal with well and um he could try to set up rocks right away. I'd be 
interested if he goes for damage right away and goes for like a body press or a um if he's really defensive going for a body press or a close combat or something to that effect but uh, i just know i have to get the heck out of here i go into slow bro to kind of guard against a potential fighting move but honestly he could have predicted that and gone for a toxic i was really afraid of this como potentially trying to hit up a toxic on my slow bro when i when i do try to hard wall it um so i did have to be concerned about that but i do try to get a future sight off on turn two the me this was probably a little bit aggressive looking back on it but um this was my first time using a future slight a future sight slow bro and i kind of wanted to stay a little bit uh, aggressive and i'll be the first to admit that this was a little bit overly aggressive for uh the kind of game that i needed to play here but overall uh it felt right at the time and and uh he does just go into, into the age slash now here's a moment where i kind of <sighs> I know that Urshifu doesn't have the best matchup against this thing, but I could feel that in this moment he wouldn't go for any fighting type attack against my slow bro. So this made me think that I could switch into a shadow ball or something to that effect with my Urshifu and at least try to pivot around a little bit from there. Um, and I try to think of whatever I would want to switch, make any doubles potentially, but uh it doesn't feel the best for me here and i feel like i didn't really lose anything by going for a, a u-turn worst case scenario he goes for a shadow sneak and gets a little bit of damage off but at this point it didn't really feel uh the best and i could at least get some type of chip damage off with with u-turn because i really have to kind of feel out how i want to play this and i really am kind of at a loss for how i want to play this because i don't really feel how like i have the best switches in to this thing but my thinking here is that um, HP isn't going to be the most important on my Zerka tree, and he's he's either he's not he's never going to shadow ball. He's either going to go for a flash cannon, which I resist, or a close combat, which isn't stab, and I potentially just take one, and I can you know still do what I need to do in terms of pivoting around. Regardless, he does go for the flash cannon, which uh, was a really interesting, but. Uh, I'm already starting to get a feel for this kind of moveset. First of all, it's a huge to know that this thing is special. It kind of does help me out quite a bit for kind of figuring out how I want to play this overall. But I completely forgot that the Future Sight comes in at the end of the turn, which breaks the subs. And I I, I did the counts. The, I needed the U-turn damage as well as the Future Sight damage, which was really, really interesting because... Um, I really didn't know how I was going to break this up otherwise without uh, letting up a lot of damage on my team. But we do make we do get it done and my Zerka Tree's in safely. And I I made the hard prediction assuming that the that the Electivire would want to come in. It does and I get over 50% which is huge because if I can get another really good prediction on this uh, Electivire then, then it goes down for free and... Um, I really didn't have to give up too, too much to kind of make all that happen. But I go out to the Rotom as he pulls a double, which is very interesting. So no Volt Switch, which was also um, very interesting just to know in, in my head at this in, at this moment. But he goes hard into the Como. So potentially, um, potentially knowing that I'm Choice, potentially know that, knowing that I'm Scarfed and trying to get uh, some, some advantage here. But I do go for the Disarming Voice. And I'll be completely honest, Disarming Voice does... Uh, a disappointing amount of damage in the situation but it does enough to getting it down to half that overall this is going to be pretty okay for what i need for the rest of this matchup but he does see the disarming voice damage um i, I believe i go for the vol switch in the situation but overall he has to start thinking about keeping this como healthy because obviously this como is going to be really important against this urshifu and against just a lot of things that i need to do in this matchup so uh, I, I, I think I was going to get out of here whether or not that Como wanted to stay in, but I did feel in the back of my head that um, the Como would need to stay healthy and he couldn't really risk taking a bunch of uh, disarming voices to, again, keep healthy for my Urshifu. So, Voltwitch felt like the strongest play overall in the situation, and it does allow me to go into Berserker Tree again for absolutely free, and I... I felt that he would not make that same play again with the Electivire, knowing that, again, another Energy Ball would just completely take this thing down. Although, obviously, that comes with a lot of risk because another Energy Ball gives um, this thing pretty much a completely free attack because in in shield form, I, I do no damage to a uh, resisted Aegislash, right? Um, but 
he does go in, in, into Electivire, which genuinely blew my mind at the time. I really did want to make the aggressive um, e energy ball play, and it would have changed the entire landscape of this matchup. But um, I do go directly into, again, my dedicated answer, which is going to be the, this Rotom. And uh, he, go he goes for the Earthquake, which was super solid. It gets me in for free. And this thing was always meant to switch in get a foul play off if he tries to ice punch and hopefully i can I'm, I'm, I'm gonna range to take it and hopefully i can kind of manage it but I, again i really don't have the strongest answers for this uh electivire here um and i really don't know what this thing would want to do if it would want to stay in if it has any kind of crazy uh tricks but it does go for the electric terrain which really blew my mind in the moment um but uh it, made per it, it makes perfect sense, right? Because if I do give it the plus one speed, then it's getting an another uh, plus one onto all of its stabs, and uh, it's being put in a really, really good position by uh, by getting that uh, electric terrain up. And again, Electivire was just not a mod that I dealt with, so it could have swept me on its own. But in comes this Comfy, and I'm, I'm, I don't have the best matchup against this thing. But I did feel like um, I would be kind of safe i felt like this thing wouldn't just come in and, and attack right it would want to come in and try to set up on me right so i get a toxic off which um again i i, I felt safe that it would either try to set up a sub and i could potentially um get this toxic off or not or or calm mind up thankfully it calm minds up twice which just lets me get the toxic off and get a volt switch out for free as well as keeping my rotom uh healthier than it came in with uh a few turns of those lefties so now i can get in my skarmory as it's going to uh whitt whittle down with toxic but i felt like i could at least um get some hazard control while uh this thing is up here again this skarmory didn't feel that necessary to the overall look of this match but uh if it can just come in get some hazard control going on and then you know pave the way for my for my dedicated answers to this then i i'd feel completely okay with this but he gets the, the nature power thunderbolt and i thought that was absolutely genius he absolutely out prepped me on that 100 percent. i loved 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 that nature power thunderbolt and you got to think about this in terms of this matchup right because he got to take out my uh skarmory for absolutely free right and that's just a mon taken off the board for absolutely no cost to him and forcing me to play this game six five uh, just out of nowhere, right? Uh, I had to play this entire match with five Pokemon because he completely, completely out, out prepped me. But uh, this does allow me to bring in my, my Silvali again a couple turns later because I really did want a, maybe a turn or two to at least get a defog off. Maybe if if if, if you let me get a defog into a Stealth Rocks. But you can see from the from the um, draining kiss damage that this thing is close to max special defense this thing is meant to take on a comfy and only take on a comfy right so i can get a i can get a poison multi-attack off gets the oko with with all that chip damage from the toxic and i didn't lose a comfy so that is a win in itself for me because i uh am ecstatic again my team does not deal with it well i had to come up with dedicated answers to this thing he brings in the Tornadus. Now, this is another mon that this Savali is specifically brought here to take on. It is as specially defensive as a Savali can be, almost, and um, it has a little bit of coverage to kind of take it on. In this in this situation, Thunderbolt was stronger only uh, only because of the electric terrain, so I can kind of um, get some hits off, maybe throw him off guard. He goes for a sub, so I I, I imagine what was going through his head was that this Silvali would not want to stay in because Silvali poison was meant more so as a resistance to the Como and to kind of keep the Como and the Comfy in check when again this thing is especially defensive specifically for this and the Comfy so um he gets off a hurricane which does a lot of damage to me and I, I believe it does 70 points of damage exactly and it it makes this a roll because obviously you can see um, I have 66 points, so it's probably a, a roll. He could he could go into a super low roll, or he could miss entirely. So he he, he goes for the heat wave. Um, a little bit of an interesting play because obviously Hurricane was his only chance to KO me. I think based on what um, I, I was able to see, but. 
Hurricane has a chance to not get that roll. Again, four points, a four point variance means that he he doesn't KO me, and um and I take him out anyway. And he could miss, which is a thirty percent chance. So, uh, he didn't even want any part of the risk and just w went for the heat wave, but let me take him out. But now he goes into he goes into the Urshifu, and as much as I, you know. I'm, I'm not like trying to preserve any n differential here. It just felt most prudent to preserve a sack in the situation because because uh, this felt like a matchup where the end game could come down to sacks in the end game, especially with uh, with a lot of momentum and a lot of the mons that are still up on our on our both of our respective boards. So I felt strongest to try to go in, in, into the slow row, even though it was a little bit of a risk. He could have gone for a U-turn, thinking that U-turn KO'd from that range. Um, so maybe it was an undue risk, but uh, it paid off for me because because um, I do get the close combat and I do get the the teleport off and I do get the, uh, a lot of momentum going on in the situation. And I'm at a loss for what I want to do here, right? It, there, I have a lot of options here, but it felt like my best option was going to be the Zerka Tree. Be, and it still remains to, to be seen whether or not this thing could potentially have Shadow Sneak. I believe I've seen... Um, at this point, maybe I've only seen Flash Cannon and Subs, so it's still a an, an open question. I do get a Volt Switch off, so I do take a little bit of a risk again, assuming that this thing wouldn't have the priority it needs to kind of tear through my team. But, um, oh, and also, I do believe that I did the calculations on that Slowbro Close Combat, and I believe that I confirmed on that one that it was, in fact, um, at least no, no boosting items. So I assumed provisionally that it was going to be Scarf. Spoiler alert, it, it is scarfed. Um, so, so I kind of could suss out from that that it, that, um, that that it was scarfed or Shifu, and that I can kind of play with that in mind for the rest of this matchup. Now, um, again, I, I never had the best switches into an Aegis Slash, but again, I felt in this moment that he wouldn't that he wasn't going to go for a Flash Cannon. He wasn't going to go for anything that would hit Urshifu strongly. If anything, he would go for a a Shadow Ball. That's exactly what it went for. I can switch in and resist it. And we are um, able to U-turn out, get a little bit more momentum going on. And I'm able to go directly into the slow row. Again, I still am really, really concerned about whether or not this thing would want to toxic me. But at this point, it just felt like a risk that I take here, right? And and he goes for an earthquake. Uh, now, I... I found out after this matchup, he never has Toxic, and he never has any move that can hit Slowbro for, like, any damage whatsoever. So, that's just um, interesting on its own. But, I, I I click Future Sight, and I just get the heck out of here, because once he... I, I had the intuition that once he saw that how little damage that that earthquake did, he would not want to stay in here. And the fact that he didn't toxic me signaled to me that he didn't have it, or he he just he just didn't have anything to really touch the slow bro. And so that gave me permission to just get the heck out of there. He goes back into the Aegis Slash, which allows me to go back into the uh, go back into the Zerka Tree, and I can just do what Zerka Tree does: full switch out. Um, I'm getting worn down a lot by rocks, and so. Um, I have to start concerning myself with how my team is getting worn down, but for right now, everything in everything here feels correct. I do get a crit, which is super unfortunate, but um, it doesn't end up mattering because, well, okay, I, I'm still very concerned, and I still don't know what I want to switch in here. I, I probably would have made a different decision had I remembered that I still had a future sight in the air, and uh, the crit would, would never matters because of that future sight up, up, up in the air, and... Um, I, and I probably would have played what I switched into differently, knowing that that Como was going to go down at the at the end of the turn. But uh, I I forgot, and um, oh, ultimately this is probably still probably best case scenario. But who knows, right? It's still kind of difficult to know. Um. So again, I still think that this thing is scarfed. Um. I end up uh, going into Slowbro, which uh, you can see, I clicked this way too quickly. I didn't think this turn all the way through, admittedly, and I gave him a very, very free U-turn into my Slowbro, um, and I think that's just a bad play on my part. I, I clicked that way too quickly. I that, that was a turn where as soon as I clicked it, I was like, oh, of course, he can just U-turn, and um, 
it made a really awkward play for me. I think what I should have done in every situation is probably give up the Silvali here. And this is exactly what I mean in terms of having a really strong kind of pivot out and kind of um, a really strong uh, sack in this end game would have helped me out quite a bit because it would have helped me keep up a lot of, a lot of momentum. But now I have to go out into my uh, Rotom because uh, Slowbro is not going to do well here. And as long as I can keep the Slowbro healthy, obviously it can directly deal with the can directly deal with the Urshifu, and I can potentially have a chance at winning in this end game, right? But overall. It's concerning a little bit how much he can kind of still wear down my team. He does go for the Toxic, which I believe um, finally reveals his entire moves there, right? So he has Toxic, a uh, dual stab between Shadow Ball and Flash Cannon, and Sub. So he never has Shadow Sneak. I can confirm that now, even though it was soft con confirmed up to now. But um, he finally, finally reveals the Toxic, which is huge in this moment. But in my mind, I can just, you know, get these foul plays off and do what I need to do. But uh foul play but the fact that foul play doesn't break the sub in one hit is very demoralizing here and i really don't know how to play this right because obviously urshifu is a fantastic option in the back but being banded it's really difficult to kind of position myself well to deal with the rest of his team right because if, if a wicked blow it deals with this Aegislash, slash and if i um if i close combat then it, i to deal with the urshifu then it doesn't hit the Aegislash, slash right so it just makes my life a lot more difficult and i i do get end up getting a crit on this um foul play but it doesn't end up mattering here i don't think because i would have always been able to um, sack something off and kind of break the cycle and now I can trap him here because my Zerka tree can come in I can always get a Thunderbolt off and it never makes sense for him to switch so he has to give this thing up um, but either way I, I I always had this H slash pinned because I can always bring in the Savali and uh, the Savali I can give the, the Savali because he, he doesn't have priority which is already confirmed but I can give the, the Savali in exchange for getting a Shadow Ball off so H slash never gets away with um, gets away behind a sub right he goes for a U-turn, which confirms 100% that he's scarved, which was kind of what I suspected from, from earlier based off of damage rolls, and it allows me to bring in the slow bro. Now, I obviously have to be very concerned about crits, right? If he crits me like twice in a row, then I'm in a lot of trouble, but um, I feel like I have to play this really carefully. Uh, he doesn't get a crit, brings me to right around half, and I do get some some Rocky Helmet out damage off, but at this point, it's just going to be a matter of time, unless, again, he crits me multiple times in a row um i'm gonna think about whether whether i want a toxic or future site but it's gonna be super risky um i could just click slack off over and over again i don't really want to have the game end this way but ultimately that is a definite path for me to win um so yeah ultimately this match is going to end with him continually U-turning. I believe I go for the Toxic on this turn. Yeah, just to accelerate things a little bit. And I felt safe enough to do it, even though it's potentially a, a pretty bad play. It's, it's potentially a game-losing play. But I didn't want to go down winning this game just playing that passively, right? I wanted to at least um, actively win this game instead of, um, instead of just playing this match in a way that I didn't really want to play this. But... Um, I do get the Rocky Helmet damage off on a final U-turn, and that is going to be the match. We end up taking this one 3-0, and like I said, it, um, a lot of things happened here, right? I feel like I played this match pretty well. I preserved what I needed to preserve, right? And ultimately, this came down to in-team prep just having dedicated answers to a number of things, and prep again playing in a way that just kind of directly dealt with whatever he wanted to throw at me. Um, it was a really difficult match. He had a lot, a lot uh, going for him. The Tornadus was terrifying. The Confi was terrifying. Um, but thankfully, Savali was there. And um, the Aegislash was a lot, a lot more difficult for me to, to kind of maneuver around than I would have expected. But uh, once the Electrifier was down, this was Zerkatree's kind of game to deal a lot of damage. And um, Slowbro was huge for gaining momentum. Everybody kind of did their part except for Skarmory, which unceremoniously went down. Uh, and like I said, I just had to play the game with five Mons, which made this incredibly difficult. But 
uh, we did end up pulling that one out. But that's going to be week number eight. That's going to be for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back really, really soon with uh, the final couple weeks of the PBAL as well as more things to come in the very, very near future. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll post again. Out.